Okay. Uh, hi, it's Andy, and I'm going to talk about uh, RIGS 5 Vector, what is the current uh, development status, and what we're going to do next. Okay. Uh, long size, it might be a little bit small, but uh, I will go through uh, what is the current status. We now support uh, running Vector in the user mode, and uh, context switch is happen. Uh, uh, it's happening on on the context switch itself. It's not the legacy style x86 uh, lazy lazy save restore, and uh, we support ptrace and signal interface. And uh, what is in development is the kernel mode vector part. And now we support running kernel mode with uh, with and without preemption. And uh, uh, the, the patch is on, is on uh, the list, and it is in V3, and in V4, we were going to introduce uh, memory copy, man set, man move, and copy from copy to user uh, with a uh, vectorized uh, uh, function variant. Yeah, and uh, uh, there are some challenge in uh, uh, kernel mode vector, like we uh, if we blindly, blindly in, enable uh, kernel mode vector, uh, it actually that does not lead to the optimal per performance. Like we can uh, we in in it uh, in an FPGA setup, uh, we run hackbench and netperf, and hack hackbench uh, it's launched uh, like thousands of process and do small copy uh, around a hundred byte copy uh, through pipe. So we, we actually see 15% uh, of regression with if we just find the enable vector. And for netperf, it is uh, better because uh, net, netperf, uh, there are a lot of large copy involved in netperf. So we, we can see uh, when we in blindly enable vector, uh, for those uh, operations, we, we see around 54% improvements. Yeah. So there are several reasons we uh, we are now uh, uh, that vector that uh, just blindly enable vector will not lead to optimal performance. Uh, first is that uh, there are hardware per, uh, perform performance characteristic difference uh, and uh, the, and, and there are some uh, vector uh, teardown and uh, startup code that is uh, when, when Scala is doing the, the main copy, it's actually copying memory, but uh, while vector are doing the, the maintenance code to start and uh, to enable and disable vector unit and stuff like that. So uh, currently we do enable vector in this following step, we first check if it, this is in hard IRQ context. Uh, if yes, then we, uh, if not, then we, we enable vector and uh, first uh, we, uh, we save the user, user mode vector context. And then we, we use a per CPU variable to, uh, to do, uh, to, to, to keep track of vector unit and enable vector. And uh, I do uh, some approach to improve this, but uh, I'm not proposing this because uh, uh, it might be some problem and hard maintenance uh, maintenance cost may be harder. And so uh, uh, the, the main improvement from this is I uh, do uh, I do enable vector by default after booting and enable vector in a unit when we enter trap. And, and other things is like uh, we, we can use a stray flag in, in, in instead of uh, using per CPU variable because uh, per CPU variable costs a little bit higher to, to do uh, vector enable and disable. And this is a flag uh, plot uh, before optimizing and up after optimizing uh, kernel block kernel mode vector begin. And we can see that uh, it's around uh, 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 100 cycles improvement to uh, to do main copy. And so the reason why vector may not be uh, better than scalar is the first part of the, the plot. We can see that uh, when 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 the uh, n is very small, the, the copy size is very so small. Then at this time, uh, vector is not actually not do, doing a better job with uh, comparing to scalar. And uh, we can we can see 
uh, we can try to calculate when when the vector is performed better than scalar and and do a, a mod uh, and only do vector copy in the uh, when the size is larger and this is a result of the uh, previous plot like hackbench and netperf uh, if we use uh, if we only enable vector for the optimal size for vector then we can see uh, actually uh, there's not very much different on the big uh, on large coffee size because uh, the the, co the constant cost is being hided and uh, but for the small size coffee we we uh, we see uh, less performance regression when we use optimal size for vector and uh, so I think uh, we should only enable vector for larger size if we want to uh, do kernel mode vector and maybe uh, add a DT interface for uh, vendors to do, uh, to to give a number of their optimal size, yeah. And uh, uh, if uh, anybody have any opinion about that, um, and and I see. I see you. You want to use the size size to determine which version of the memory copy to use. Um, but, and I also see you uh, measurement uh, on that's uh, uh, if the size is uh, larger, you will got better benefit from the vector version. Uh, but uh, my question is the uh, uh, if the DDR bandwidth is not uh, high enough, that what can that may cannot support your uh, measurement because your measurement is based on FPGA and the P P F in the FPGA scenario, it could give you sufficient uh, DDR bandwidth. Yeah. So so that's where you, you got that result. Uh, but uh, in the real type out the chips, uh, the, uh, I think uh, depends on different scenarios. It may be for the server, uh, you could get again a high bandwidth with the external DRAM, but for the, some embedded scenarios, the, that's a limited bad, bad was scenario. Mm -hmm. So maybe that vector version uh, would yeah. be deprecated a lot. So what I propose here is uh, could we consider different ABI version to this memory copy? I mean the vector memory copy or the normal regular memory copy? Uh, I think that will be a little bit complicated when, when, uh, because users don't have, uh, don't know what, uh, sometimes the, the, the size is uh, variable, but uh, I, I can see that uh, th this is strongly related to memory bandwidth. And actually we, uh, in FPGA, we simulate the uh, bandwidth, uh, we have memory delay module and we set it to uh, around 18, 85 nanosecond uh, LLC miss penalty. And, and we simulate it uh, this uh, core on, running on a two gigahertz uh, platform. And uh, uh, so I, I think uh, it is a uh, vendor can uh, de decide what size, uh, what, what, what is the size, optimal size for, for their memory bandwidth and for their core. And uh, if, if some uh, uh, vendor have uh, less memory bandwidth, then they can, to uh, set it to a very large size and only enable vector after uh, that the, the size, yeah. I missed what you said you're doing with user space vector. Are you doing? Are you doing any lazy restore at the moment? Or? Uh, you mean uh, we uh, the lazy save restore in user space? Uh, with context switches, yeah. Uh, in, in kernel, we are not using lazy safe restore to user space, and uh, so you just restore every. Uh, no, we uh, actually we restore app before we really want to re return to user space. We we have a deferred restore mechanism in kernel. So if we enable kernel mode vector multiple time, we only have to save at the first uh, save user space vector context at. Uh, the first enablement of vector unit, and we only uh, restore before we uh, we really want to in, uh, uh, like return to user space.
Does it make sense to try to detect the boundary for vector versus scalar performance at runtime? Uh, did you mean the enable of vector? Yeah, you're talking about like the vector mem copy. You only want to use it for larger sizes. Does it make sense to try to detect that that boundary or like just a good approximation of that at runtime so you don't have to worry uh, on like what's the device tree binding or how do you do that for ACPI? Right, that that is a good idea, maybe. Uh, but uh, it will lead to uh, increased boot time, and and uh, uh, I think uh, it is easy to determine the 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 uh, a slope and the constant uh, uh, characteristic of the lowest plot because they are all linear, and we can, um, yeah, it is doable. But I I. Don't know um, others' opinions about this. Probably depends on the variance in the break between the vendors, right? Like if we're talking about like 32 or 64 bytes, then like maybe it doesn't matter and you don't need to, to measure that breaking point. But if it's some yeah. sort of huge like range, then it would you'd get more benefit from uh, yeah doing the dynamic exactly trade. yeah so. Uh, an easy way is to just set it to 1K or 2K. And I guess even worse, it could theoretically depend on OPP points if the CPU point changes. But I don't know how complicated we want to do. Uh, I just wanted to, like, at runtime detection, we have to be careful. Now we are doing, fast, like, unaligned access at runtime, so how much boot time also we are costing there, right? So, yeah. So, uh, we, we we can do any analysis about uh, the size of uh, man copy and uh, I, I I actually do that. Uh, most of the size is uh, very small for for boot time and uh, when 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 we enter user space, there are a lot of uh, page flows and page flows in are there are a lot of, a lot of kerabyte copy involved in page flows. <laughs>